In this example problem, we want to determine the service load and the ultimate load that should be used to design the double T-beams, our inverted T-beams, and L-beams in the parking structure that's shown below. So we have a, a pretty basic layout where our double T-beams are pre-topped with a 61-foot span and they frame into L-beams on the outside and inverted T-beams in the middle. And we're uh, given some information on our double T-beams and on the next slides, we're also given some information on our L-beams and inverted T-beams. So uh, we can start by looking for our load. We have a parking structure, so we'll come to our ASC 7 table and we can assume that we have passenger vehicles only, so we'll have a load here of 40 pounds per square foot. And uh, note that we don't have any, or we're not permitted to use any live load reduction for our uh, double T, inverted T, or L beams. Um, and then we'll also include a superimposed dead load for the parking structure of 0 0.005 kips per square feet. This is an, an approximate superimposed dead load taken from the PCI design handbook for pre-topped double T's, which is what we have. First, we'll look at the double T beams and the load on these beams. And we'll start by finding the self weight of these double T beams. The self weight is going to be 0 0.150 kips per cubic foot, the density of our concrete, times the area of our double T beams, 855 square inches. And we're, we're make the units consistent, so take one square foot divided by 144 inches squared, and we'll get a density, or a uh, self weight here of 0 0.891 kips per foot. So this load we found, but it is the, the same load from the load tables in the PCI design handbook for this section. Next, we can find our distributed superimposed dead load and we have our surface load from the previous slide, uh, 0 0.005 kips per square foot times 10 feet, which is the width of our top flange, which will give us 0 0.05 kips per foot. Next, we have our distributed dead load, which is just the addition of our self weight on our superimposed dead load. So we have 0 0.891 plus 0 0.05 kips per foot to give us a total dead load of 0 0.941 kips per foot. Our live load, we can find similar to our superimposed dead load. So 0 0.040 kips per square foot times 10 feet, the width of our top flange, which will be 0 0.40 kips per foot. We can then uh, use these loads uh, with our ACI factors for our, our factored load and just add them together to find our service loads. So here you can see I'm adding the dead load and the live load together to find our service loads. So service were unfactored, so without any load amplification factors. And then when we're looking at our factored load, we're including our ACI 3 team load amplification factors. So for this combination, we'll have 1.2 times dead load plus 1.6 times live load. So we do that here and we get a ultimate load of 1.769 kips per foot. So these are the service load and ultimate load that we would use when designing our double T-beam. Next, we're going to find the loads on our L-beams, which are our exterior beams here. So these beams are going to take the load from half of our double T-beams. So we'll assume that our, our tributary width is 30.5 feet. Uh, I also want to note that the load is going to be applied on the ledge from the 
webs of these double T beams resting on the ledge of the L beam. Uh, so in actuality, it would be a series of point loads, but we're going to assume that we just have a, a distributed load um, applied on the L beams from the double T beam. So we can find uh, the distributed load by taking the service and ultimate loads from uh, our double T beam calculations and dividing them by the width of our top flange 10 feet. So our, our service load, we would have 1.341 kips per foot divided by 10 feet, which would give us 0 0.134 kips per square feet. We can do the same thing for our ultimate load. So from the previous slide, we had 1.769 kips per foot divided by 10 feet, which would give us uh, an ultimate load here of 0 0.177 kips per square foot. And then we can also find the self-weight of our L-beam. Uh, so we, we're given the area, we know that our density is 0.15 uh, kips per cubic foot times our area 528 square inches times one square foot divided by 144 square inches will give us a self weight here of 0 0.550 kips per foot. Again, we can find these from the load tables for our standardized sections and, and they'll be equivalent. So finally, we can use these values to calculate our service and ultimate uh, distributed loads for our L beams. So first for our, our service distributed load, we'll have our self, our self weight, 0 0.550 kips per foot. Plus we have our surface load times our tributary width, 30.5 feet. So we have 0 0.134 kips per square foot times our tributary width, 30. 0.5 feet is going to give us a service load here of 4.637 kips per foot. So here then we have our service load and our ultimate load for our L beams, and we can use them uh, these loads to design our beams. Finally, we'll find our loads that we can use for designing our inverted T-beams. And here, our inverted T-beams are in this center line here. And we'll have half the span length on one side and half the span length on the other side contribut contributing load to this center line of beams. So our tributary width is 61 feet. So uh, we have uh, our, our tributary width there. Uh, our self-weight of the inverted T-beam, we can find the same way that we did for our other beams. So we have our density times the area, uh, make our units consistent, and we'll get our distributed uh, load for our self-weight self -weight of the beam as 0.65 kips per foot. Next, we can do the same thing that we did for our L-beams, uh, but with a, a wider tributary width. So here we'll have our self-weight plus the pressure load, uh, the surface load that we found on the previous slide, times our tributary width of 61 feet to get our service distributed load for our inverted T-beam. And then we can add in our uh, load factor for our, our dead load or self-weight and uh, to get our, our ultimate load. I, I, I didn't highlight it on the last slide, but note that our load factors are already uh, included in this pressure load uh, that we found on the last slide, so we don't need to include another load factor here. So that's why we don't have a, a 1.6 or a 1.2 or anything uh, times this um, 0.177. The, the load factors are, are already built into that value. So uh, that concludes this example. We can use uh, these loads that we found in this example to design these different elements.